Okay, so since the brain of Frankenstein is stupid, um, let's try to improve the brain of Frankenstein. So take note, um, the code here, this one, this one, this one, is where machine learning programmers are paid. How effective are you and how efficient are you in creating a model or the brain model of your machine? Okay, so let's try to improve this one. We could do something like this, all right? So um, instead of six, what if instead of six, let's create now a hundred neurons, right? For example, um, let's create now instead of six like that or 12, let's create now more than six. So for example, let's create now, let's say a hundred, all right? And then we also create on what we can do here is we can create now another layer. So let's copy this. So what you want, if I could zoom this out. This one, what if we add now another layer? So given that, hmm, I think I could add the layer. So I'll copy this. And then let's paste another layer. Probably we could add so meaning a hundred neurons or I don't I don't know what we call it, but in my case I call it neurons. So for example, a hundred of these arrows from here. Okay, a hundred of these arrows here. So that's what we created. Right? Copy, paste, and so on, something like that. Right? So oh uh -huh, that's okay. Then just think of it, just think of this as a hundred neurons. This is what we created, okay, this line of code here. We could add, for example, another layer. Why not, right? Then, let's create now here, oh, where is my, so meaning that line of code, we created now another type of layer, okay, with 100 arrows or 100 quote-unquote neurons. But the thing is, if we can do that, why can't we just, for example, instead of 100, we can make this um, 1 million, okay? So that it's the Frankenstein or our machine will be able to study the training data more efficiently, right? Efficiently. So do something like that. Why can't we do that? Here's the thing. Yes, you can do that. Let me just undo that one. Yes, you can do that. But the thing is... um. For example, if I have a thousand million arrows, million arrow, million arrows, or what let's just call them neurons for short, what if our computer or Frankenstein was able, okay, was able to answer our test by, by just having five layers and say for example a hundred neurons? but you're using a million arrows or neurons, then you're just wasting, okay? You're wasting computer resources. Again, this is why this is where machine learners are paid. How effective and how effective are you, okay? So how effective and efficient are you in creating the brain or what we call the model of, your machine this is where you get paid as a machine learning programmer okay so by this time i'll just make this 100 and then of course we only need one output because we only need one arrow as our output <coughs> okay sorry for that one <coughs> right, sorry for that one. next we have another I'm sorry. Oh, oops. We have another code here. We could type in something like this. tf.random.seed and then 42. Okay, the 42 now can be any number. But here, what this does, it, it shuffles, it shuffles your input data in your training set. What do you mean by this one? Okay. When you set seed to 42, basically this one 
can be shuffled 42 times. This could be here, this could be here, this could be here. I think a good example here, since we asked, um, we asked the machine to look at it sequentially, our model sequentially, what we can do is we want to shuffle our input, meaning instead of the garlic being here, the input could be, for example, here, shuffle there, shuffle there, and so on by 42 times, okay? Um, let's make it 100, okay? And let's see. Let's see if baby Frankenstein is able to correctly predict our test set. So let's play that. Play that again. Okay. Oh, notice our epoch is much, our loss is much more smaller. A while ago it was a thousand. Right now it's, oh, it's about zero. So that's good. So let's try to predict the test. Let's play this one. And let's try to plot the figure size. Oh, there we go. Frankenstein is not stupid anymore. He's intelligent. Look at this one. Look at the how the green and red dots align. That's good. So we're able now. now beginners would play this shot. Okay, sorry for that. What? We're able now to create an efficient model for our input data. Or we're able, we're able to create now a good model for Frankenstein. Okay. So with that, all we have to do now is let's save now our brain or let's save now the brain of Frankenstein. So let's save the brain of Frankenstein. So all you have to do now is let's type in model, sorry, um, Frank brain, where are you? Frank brain dot save, okay, dot save in your file name. Let's call this as Frankenstein brain. All right. So let's play this one just in order to save the data. And once you save the data, you will be able to see now here. This is now the data of your of Frankenstein's brain. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully you learned something today. But wait. I'm sure you're asking. I mean, that's easy just to predict the y values. I just add, for example, plus 10 plus 3. Any grade schooler can predict that, meaning you're smarter than Frankenstein. But wait, that's just a basic program. Now, here's the thing we only had two variables, which is x and y, right? Now, for example, this is our, this was our input, right? We had your x and y values but the, you have your x as your independent variable and then your y as your independent variable so those are those are two values of course you can predict that but what if we had more access okay we had more dependent variables you have your z axis you have for example your u axis you have another axis here as your a axis then you have several values here. Say, for example, your B axis, your C axis, and so on. You have several dependent variables. As a person, of course, you're not, you're not, you're, you're not able, you're not going to be able to predict that. But here, a computer can using now the model that we created. So that would be our second, second machine learning program. Okay. So on the second learning machine program, we're gonna you, we're gonna predict now a heart disease using several variables, and just to see if a person has a heart disease or not. Okay. We're gonna look at the cholesterol level, the age, the uh, what else, the what they call this, the sugar level, and so on several variables in order to predict if a person has um, heart disease or not. So that would be our second program, machine learning program. So I'll see you for our next machine learning program in the next videos. So thank you.